So you say you've been wanting to do film photography for a while, but you have been confused and perhaps even a little intimidated by the whole process. Well, fear not, because today we are taking a step-by-step -step plan of action to get you on the road to film photography immortality. What is going down, you awesome and hard to please camera geeks? Sam from CameraLegend.com and we are back today. Damn, man. Like the bouquet here. All right, you guys, what's going on? I'm borrowing my friend's um, RP to do this video, EOS RP. Hey, man, that little extra bit of bouquet looks pretty good there. This face detection is not so bad either. <laughs> pretty good, actually, yeah. All right, well, uh, you know, I was in a bit of a kind of mood today and I was thinking, you know, I remember this uh, President Kennedy, uh, John F. Kennedy, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. And so I was thinking, you know, yeah, why should I ask you guys to subscribe, man? I should be asking what I could do for you. Now, the sad part of it is that I haven't done so much for the beginner, so today uh, this episode is uh, specifically for you guys, uh, especially the absolute beginners. Now, when you hear the word beginner, it has a negative connotation it seems, but there should be no shame in being a beginner because we all start out as beginners, you know? Uh, whether you're Peter McKinnon, Kai, or um, what's that guy from um, from DP Review, that cool, that cool guy that knows everything. Um, what's his name? Damn, maybe I should take some Prevagen. I kind of forgot. Maybe you guys can help. You guys know who I'm talking about. Though. What's his name, man? He looks, looks kind of like half Asian and half white. Um, Nichols. Chris Nichols. Yeah, cool guy. Whether you're McKinnon, Kai, or Nichols, we all start out as beginners. So today's episode, I'm going to uh, guide you guys through the process of film photography. Uh, today we're going to focus on three things. Camera, lens, and film. Alright? Alright you guys, so back in the good old days before YouTube, as far as I'm concerned, there were two main methods of learning film photography, okay? So the first one is so the first one is what I would call the hardcore method uh, and that's still my preferred method which is I throw you into the lion's den I push you out of the nest you either fly or you die all right so you would have to learn all this stuff you know and fit, try to figure everything out before you can take a decent shot all right and like I said that's the days before YouTube but the second method is what I call the sweet mama method. And today, sweet mama is in the house. So grab your coffee and let's get right on into it. It's okay. All right guys, so what you're looking at right now is what you might call the holy trifecta of cheap cameras, okay? Uh, the main reason I can recommend these three cameras is because for you guys, the beginners, especially the absolute beginners, the main reason I'm recommending them is because they all have what they call a program mode. So let's take a look at the Nikon FG first, okay? This Nikon FG right here. So the Nikon FG uh, is a great bargain in today's world. You can have this camera for about $50 and many times less than that. That's for the body alone. The lens I got on it is the 50 millimeter f1.8 series E Nikon and this lens will cost you roughly around 50 or less as well. So you're looking at roughly $100 for this outfit, okay? Now, as I said, the great thing about the FG is that, is that it has this program mode, which is the red P right here. And to use it in program mode, you have to make sure that your lens is on f22, okay? Make sure that the lens is on f22 and you will be in the program mode. Now, when I was growing up, there was a time when uh, people frowned upon the program mode. You know, I would read these uh, articles and people like, oh, well, don't use the program mode because, you know, uh, that's, that's for uh, beginners. Well, you know, duh, right? Because you're a beginner, right? Anyway, the program mode is the one that's likely to give you the best results right away. Uh, everybody's got to start somewhere and the program mode is a great way to start. And the good thing about this camera is once you grow out of the program mode, 
you can go right into aperture priority and once you get even more advanced you can go into the uh, manual mode all right so this is a great camera to start with all right the second camera I got for today right here is the Rico XRX 3PF uh, now this camera looks like an autofocus camera it almost looks like an EOS model like a Canon EOS but it's actually a manual focus camera and as I mentioned before uh, this camera also has a program mode okay so for this camera I got on it the 50 millimeter f2 uh, Rikonon Rico Rikonon lens and to use it in program mode you have to make sure that the lens is on the green P right here now I don't have any batteries to uh, show you guys right now but uh, you'll figure it out now the Rico might be the cheapest and most underloved camera of these three and this whole outfit could probably be had for around 50 bucks or less all right if you know how to look I'm pretty sure you can get this for under $50 for the whole outfit all right all right all right last but not least is a camera that is very near and dear to my heart and this is the camera that really piqued my interest in photography oh so many years ago and that camera is the Minolta X700 only from the mind of Minolta and the X700 is probably the most expensive camera on this list the body alone will run you about a hundred dollars more or less and if you get the 50 millimeter f 1.7 Minolta MD lens that's gonna run you between 20 to 50 dollars so all in all roughly about hundred fifty dollars and still very affordable for anyone starting out in photography a few of you eagle eye cherries may have noticed that I actually have on the Minolta X700 today the 50 millimeter f1.2 Rockor X and uh, the main reason I'm using it is because my 50 millimeter f1.7 MD lens is long gone but uh, for you guys for especially for the beginners I would definitely recommend you stay simple and cheap so I would definitely recommend the 50 millimeter f1.7 Minolta MD lens and as great a lens as the 50 millimeter f1.2 is I can guarantee you guys that you're not going to be losing out much by getting the 50 millimeter f1.7 and you can always add the 1.2 later on all right as an additional note uh, whenever you are buying a vintage camera of any kind always make sure you buy from a legitimate dealer with some kind of warranty because uh, even though I am recommending these cameras uh, they all could fail at any time and you would like to have some kind of peace of mind with a warranty knowing that you can return it within a certain amount of time or you know get a replacement so just make sure you're taking that precaution all right now back to the x700 its claim to fame really is right here which is its famous program modes it's known for multiple program modes but that green program mode right there is responsible for uh, giving me all those great exposures that I had as a kid and I thought I did it but it was actually the x700 that was doing roughly all the work but uh, one thing one note about the program mode is that uh, you can't just put it on P and expect it to be in program mode there are things that you need to do like set the lens to the minimum aperture like on the lens right ha I have right there it's f16 and it's labeled in green so you know that it's supposed to match the green program mode so those are the little things that you have to keep in mind before you actually in the program mode now although any program mode can be fooled the Minolta X700 uh, is very consistent with giving good exposure so this is why I think this is a great camera especially for beginners who want great results right away and just like the other two cameras on our list today once you feel that you've outgrown the program mode and you feel like exploring you can start exploring the aperture priority or manual mode so this camera gives you a lot of room to grow with and this camera can take really superb flash images especially if you're using a dedicated Minolta flash because Minolta had a very advanced system in here uh, that they called OTF or off the film 
of the film plane metering in which the camera takes very, very precise readings uh, off the film plane itself right at the moment of exposure. So these are three cameras that I can definitely recommend for you guys. You guys, the absolute beginners. We all have to start somewhere and these cameras will get you off to a great start. All right, so for the lens, I would recommend you guys start out the old fashioned way, which is the cheapest and the best lens your money can buy. And that is the humble 50 millimeter F1.8 or F2. No matter what camera manufacturer you choose, the humble 50 millimeter is the best bang for your buck that you can buy. And the lens is a lot more versatile than most people would think it is, especially for those coming from the zoom kit lenses. What the humble 50 millimeter lens offers is an aperture large enough to give you that blurry background for your portraits. It will teach you composition by moving around for your street and your landscape shots. So this lens is a very versatile lens and it is a bargain no matter which manufacturer you choose. Okay, so lastly on your three steps to film photography immortality is the film, okay? Now, you, now what you should know is that none of these are more important than the other. They are all intrinsic to each other, okay? You can't have the camera without the lens and you can't have the camera without the lens without the film, okay? Because the film is basically the sensor of your camera, okay? So, most people will start out with a 100 speed film uh, and for me, I, I only recommend that if you shoot a lot of daylight or outdoors, if you get ISO 200, that'll give you a little bit more versatility. But for me, I traditionally stick to 400 uh, because 400 will give you uh, because 400 will give you a little bit more versatility. Now you can also get the ISO 800 uh, films, uh, which are common with color print films, and that's going to give you uh, quite a bit more versatility. Also, if you do a lot of night shooting, you can get something like this, which is the T-Max P3200, uh, which is great for available light, indoor light, low light. But I'm not recommending this right now because it's just going to add more to your confusion, okay? So either stick to the 100, the 400, or uh, the Kodak color films, which a lot of them are ISO 800. But personally for me, I just use the 400 speed films, and even indoors, uh, with subdued lighting. Uh, as long as I got my nifty 50 here, I'm usually able to pull off an exposure unless it's really, really dark, then you would need a flash, okay? So uh, I assume that as absolute beginners, you are not going to be developing the films yourself. So uh, be sure to send it out to a competent lab. If you have a local lab that's still doing it, which to be honest with you, they are a disappearing breed but if you do have one near you that's still developing film give them some business give them some love you know all right so I want you guys to try this for one two or three rolls and report back you know leave a comment uh, love to see your results if you have a link to your results I would love to see it but I can guarantee you if you did exactly what we mentioned here get a camera with a program mode uh, use a 50 millimeter lens and put a 100 to 400 uh, ISO film and just follow the guidelines you should be getting some great results and I can only hand hold you so much on YouTube but uh, do a little research on your camera so if you got anything out of this uh, hit the like button uh, subscribe if you're not already subscribed and very important to hit the notification button for the next time I post a video Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget, nothing wrong with being a beginner because beginners rock. The beginners of today are the winners of tomorrow. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys next time on the CameraLegend.com YouTube channel. CameraLegend.com